Okay. I'm Eric Canal from Eric Romery Photography. Um, I was asked to make a cloning and healing video using Lightroom um, based off the picture I posted the other day. So I'm going to try and go through this kind of quick so you guys can get the gist of it and uh, we can learn how to clone and heal the best way we can in Lightroom. Um, I'm trying to find the picture I did yesterday. So, oh, just kidding. Give me one second. Okay, so here's the before and after. As you can tell, it had kind of a lot of wrinkles from it. It was supposed to be one of the seamless ones. I just didn't have it pulled very tight. My temperature is kind of low, which is fine. I mean, I can fix all of that in Lightroom with my raw images. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this so I can kind of show you from start to finish what I did. Um, okay, so pretty, not ugly picture, but not pristine picture for sure. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to fix all of my blanket issues. My rule of thumb with cloning and healing, a lot of people say you can't do it very well in Lightroom, which I beg to differ. Um, I do 90% of my cloning and healing in Lightroom. If there's something super tricky, then I'll do it in um, Photoshop, but for the most part, you really can't. You just need to know when to use each one. So with healing and cloning, I'm going to do cloning first. I use cloning when I'm getting really close to my subject. Um, if you do heal too close to your subject, it'll start to pull um, colors from that are nearby. So if I do this, I'm going to just try to find a smooth spot. And let me show you what happens if I switch it to heal. So see how it kind of pulls the white from down here. And if you get any closer, it'll do the same thing. So we don't want that. Um, we're going to keep it at clone. And I'm going to go through and get as close as I can. And just, oops. Uh, just do some of these bigger ones right around him first. It's going to look kind of funky at first, but you can fix it pretty easily afterwards. Just getting the base basically done. These I'm actually going to do heal because we're not too close to anything. Um, bear with me when I say I'm going to do this kind of not perfect um, like the other one was. I just want to be able to show you what I'm doing. Um, all of these I can do heal. And I'll start to use bigger spots. Bigger spots, in my opinion, tend to look better and smoother than little ones because you can sometimes start to get circles um, being seen. So even by his hair, I think last night when I was working on it, yeah, he can be fine. Um, he has tons of hair, right? Tons, tons, tons. Um, gonna go through this. Keep going and finding those flatter areas if you can find them. And gonna just like I said, I mean, for those of you that were in the group and saw the before and after picture of how many circles I had, you'll see why. Because I just keep going and going and going. Because you can get the majority of these done, like I said, in Lightroom if you know how to use them. So heal for far away things, clone for really close things, see how this looks so far. So that already looks a ton better. Um, so I'm noticing this one circle right here is kind of prominent. So once you go through with the clone, you can go back through with the heel over your clones and uh, get them covered a little bit better. Because heel will kind of blend things more so than clone will. Um, Alright, so that's probably going to be all that I'm going to do for now. So this is still kind of a pretty harsh border between the two, but I can soften those later. Um, so now I'm just going to brighten them up a little bit. And I, let's see, what did I do here? I was warming him up a lot. If you can tell from these um, images, they're all, I mean, it was all pretty blue. It was pretty dark in my studio when I did these. Um, let me see if I can find, so here's what I did to this image, so just temperature I added a lot, tint a little bit because he's a little green, contrast shadows, um, so we're just going to go back to this so I can redo this, um, so I'm going to up the temperature quite a bit here now until... 
yeah, we, we went quite a bit with the temperature on this one. Um, okay, so temperature, and then I'm going to up the tint just a little bit, because like I said, he's a little bit green. Add some contrast in, and let's see. I'm going to do just a little bit down of the shadows. Um, with this image, I've been playing around with um, the vignetting a little bit more. I used to not be a fan of it, but I've been experimenting more, and I do kind of start to like it. Just don't go too harsh or you'll get very um, very edited looking images and you don't want that. You want to keep them as natural as possible. Um, and then I also always mess with luminance when it comes to babies too because you can take out reds, you can add reds, you can see in his hand that things are changing a little bit when I mess with the reds. Um, I want to say I upped orange just a little bit, yeah, to darken the image. Um, I just kind of play around with these a little bit until I see that it's where I want it to be. Still think I'm going to warm them up a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of where I'm looking at. Um, and that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. I'm going to go in with our brushes that we have. Um, and we are going to go, let's see. I've used Skin Smooth for it before. But you can also use some other ones. Um, you can go in here and go in, and I'm going to, so that's not showing a whole, whole lot. All right, scratch that. I'm not going to use that one. Um, I've also gone through with even just the generic stuff that's in here. Um, before I even knew about Lightroom or Pretty Presets brushes and stuff like that, I was just using the basic brushes that were in here. So I would use Sharpness. And I'm going to open this up a little bit so you can see I'm going to take down sharpness all the way down instead of up, as well as clarity. Both of those are going to soften things up. Um, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And come on. Go in just a little bit around here. And with that, let me see here. Okay. So... Still not totally what I want. It did maybe a teeny bit, not what I want. Um, even in my original, though, I didn't. The one that I posted last night still had a pretty harsh line. I could still go into Photoshop, and if I wanted to smooth that out even more, I could. But what I'm trying to get from this video is that you can do a lot of post-processing of skin editing um, and cloning, healing, all of that in here a lot more than you think you can. Um, don't be afraid to try it and keep practicing with it. It took me a while to realize um, that you could do so well in Lightroom, but you can. That little spot was bothering me on his nose, so we're going to clean that out. Um, and even then, I still would go up a little bit warmer with him. That's just my um, view on images. I like them to be a lot warmer. Other people don't. So whatever you like, and then I'm going to down clarity just a little bit make his skin look a little bit smoother. And that's how I'm going to leave it for now. Um, like I said, it's not a perfect example. I just wanted to quickly show you the cloning and healing um, and have a little bit of an edit. So I hope this helps someone. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.